up on tonight's broadcast, Jim Hickey's pornographic outburst, Pentagon insider Paul Buchanan on airport security bullshit. Terrorist attacks on the United States have to shock the American public into submission. Randy Rodney's sex shock, what politicians really get up to in the House, and we take you inside the Lord of the Rings media machine, asking inappropriate questions and getting away with Mordor. lost the America's Cup and the World Cup, but at least we had the Lord of the Rings. There were no gut-churning moments as the red carpet filled up with water, no hobbits being abused by George Gregan, and no one calling for Peter Jackson's dismissal. In short, the premiere of the Lord of the Rings was the perfect end to a year that many of us would rather forget. Wellington is under siege, as journos from around the world flock to the premiere of The Return of the King. Nice. It's an orgy of fans, cops, orcs, black riders and hobbits, with little people everywhere. People with hobbit ears, big ears, huge ears, gargantuan ears, 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 ears. Even serious reporters were sporting fake ears. Well, the movie has finished, the stars and everyone else have arrived. It's there and we'll go through and see the film. Day one of the media um, junket, and I'm being processed. More information for you on junket day, all your interviews. All oh, good ones. Can you sign the embargo agreement? It's around here that I begin to feel uneasy, and in a mad panic, sign in as Uday Hussein. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's as if I'm being sucked into some sort of matrix, a PR vortex where my minor celebrity is wiped clean, making me a slave to the corporate running dogs. Outside, the city is under their control. Are these really cameramen? It's like pre-war Iraq with Gandalf sitting in for Saddam. Soon I will be completely under their control, locked in a dark room watching the movie. But first, another shakedown to break my spirit. Now I take a cell phone camera or a video camera in. What about cigarettes? Um, I pre- they, check, they check your bags before you enter. Um, I presume you'd be allowed to take cell phones in. You've got to walk through cigarettes. I mean, you've got to walk through a metal detector before you enter the cinema. What about pets? Pets, no. Back at the hotel now um, after the media screening, the first screening, the first people in the world to watch Lord of the Rings and uh, my initial thoughts are fantastic and long. I then fell into a deep sleep and woke ready for level two, the interviews. Hobbits continued to roam freely and security was getting even heavier. Evil was in the air. And I don't just mean Pauline Gillespie. I'd written some questions while drunk the night before, but was I brave enough to ask them? First up, Frodo. There's a lot of people from all over the world here now as well that have traveled just out here for this. I've never seen so many people in Wellington. It's, yeah, the population's like doubled or tripled. It's out of control. It's mental. There could be an earthquake any moment. I know, right? We're all waiting for it. We're just sort of... Well, there like, is, there are earthquakes here. Major earthquakes. Yeah. But there's going to be the big one, like, I mean... You think? We're going into the ground Well, here. it's going to be bad luck because all these people are here? I don't know. I just... You, you feel know, it? I'm is feeling it? something, you know, there's... Is something in the air? Well, I hope not. I certainly hope not, but it's that thing of like, if it does, it's going into the sea. <coughs> you know, we're going into, we're here sitting where we are now. Well, it looks like we're in Lord of the Rings world. Actually, we could easily, you know, fall into the sea. Drop into the sea. And we're gone. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you think they'll find Saddam Hussein? Um, mm, yes. He may already be dead. What do you think of New Zealand girls? <laughs> a little bit dowdy? No! Are you really? kidding? Really? Gorgeous. Everybody says they're dowdy. No. Everybody's Lies. saying that. Everybody's saying they're dowdy. See, the diffs. other thing about New Zealand women is beyond their physical attraction, whether that's, which I think is irrelevant, uh, is their style sense. Particularly women in Wellington. It's poor, poor. I think it's great. It's good. Yeah. I think there, there's a, a strong sense of style here in New Zealand. I'm so surprised that you say that. Really? Yeah. I don't know, man. Everybody else comes across here and they says they've got big diffs and, you know, I mean, you wander around They're Europe. shapely women as well. Certainly which, shapely. Which I love. Certainly shapely. Yeah. Do you think all New Zealanders like they're alcoholics? No. Not any more than Ireland or England or Australia. <laughs> yeah, those are the other places that are all... There you go. alcoholics. <laughs> yeah. But then it was time to ask the question that a leading broadcaster had dared me to ask the night before. He said I was too chicken, but he was wrong. New Zealand pussy. Yeah. Discuss? Uh, there's a lot of felines around. I'm a married man. What are you talking about? Oh, you're a married man. I'm you a married are, of course man. you're a married man. Yeah. You're a happily married man. If I'm not mistaken, it's women who run this country, so, you know, I oh, think yeah. it's a dangerous question to Oh, ask. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but you're allowed to look, though. You're allowed to, you're allowed um, to look, my God, man! How am I, how right am I to, to answer that? Uh, Tidy, slightly dowdy. Um, strong. I would say strong. New Zealand women are kind of uniquely have a unique power and strength mm. that oh, that yeah. would terrify most oh, American men. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting the prime minister tomorrow. Oh, I yeah. won't tell her about our conversation. <laughs> no, no, no! Don't, don't do that. <laughs> She's a close personal friend. She'll, she'll be gutted. <laughs> Hopefully no one sees this. Thank you, sorry. I'd realised I'd gone over the line when Flipside turned on me just minutes later. Actually, Holy cow. That, uh, did you hear how he asked the question? <laughs> yes. It was yeah. astonishing. Well, what, how did he ask? You tell us. Well, I don't want to say the word. It's a, it's a, he, he, well, he was just used a very crass way did to ask Did he say dowdy or downy? Well, no, no, he did say <laughs> dowdy, but that was, I was still reeling from the way he posed the question. New Zealand I'll woman. write it for you. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me your... I, I understand it was something like. Go ahead. Something to do with. You know. Come on, Ashton. <laughs> he asked you about he asked it. you about the women, feminine wiles in, in New Zealand. I'll say it much more politely than he did because he he, he needs. That's what he said. Part. What do you think of the New Zealand chicks? A bit av, eh? A bit av. If you were to be honest, beautiful landscape, nice people, kind people, a gentle people, a loving people, but a bit av on the looks front. Um, let's say a big diff. Ah, listen, there's nothing wrong with that, my boy. Man needs something to hold in the night. Trust me on that. You know. Mm. The dwarfs <laughs> seemed to find it funny, but the New Line operatives had stripped me of my papers, relieved me of my laminates. I was an unperson, and only our cameraman was allowed to go to the press conference, where people asked proper questions. My question is for Billy. Uh, Billy, if you would play a different character, who would it be and why? You've changed lives. Did you ever think that this was possible at the beginning of this process? Do you think Kiwis are a little bit different? So do you think that the interviews were run sort of like a Nazi war camp? Well, not so much a Nazi war. It's definitely run like a military operation, yeah. Has your pass ever been revoked? No. I got revoked. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Nothing around my neck. Look. Oh, yeah. Are you gone, eh? I'm gone. I'm gone, Burgess. There you go. What did you do to make him, uh... I asked what they thought of New Zealand pussy. Is that all? Yeah. I can't believe you, you can't talk about that. You can't talk about no, your no, New Zealand chicks like that. No, no, I'm saying, you know, I love New Zealand. I mean, wonderful. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but I'm just... But people say, you know, physically, to look at... That's so Sometimes mean. a big diff. Darling, don't go there. <laughs> 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 I think, you know, no, nah, New Zealand women are great. They've got a lot of style, a lot of class. They're cool, man. I mean, they're very earthy and wise as well. They've got that sort of wisdom. I'm but, not partaking know. in this conversation. <laughs> what, about, what about New Zealand men? They're really cute. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of cute boys around. <laughs> 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 
nominated for best cock-up from an outside broadcast. Zahri's lawyers are challenging the refusal of the SAS, the Security Intelligence Service, to provide even so much as a, of a summary of the allegations against him. Now our man Tony Field was at the High Court in Auckland. He saw how it went. Hello, Tony. Tony, I've lost you, I think. Is Tony there? I've lost you. Tony's done a tape piece. I think we'll just throw straight to that. This is the piece that Tony Field filed. And welcome to Ring's cast and crew for a reception at Parliament. How are you, Hello, sweetheart. It's good to see you. Then the King left, waving to his subjects. Simon Beatty, 3 News. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm Honestly, I'm really sorry. I thought they were Lord of the Rings ears, those fake ones. Give us another look at them. They're pretty big. Let's have a look. Oh, see, they are beauties, aren't they? They really are beauties. Still to come, is airport security a sham? And Hickey shocks the nation with a porno sandwich. If you've ever thought that security measures at New Zealand airports are more show than substance, you're not alone. In fact, a former advisor to the Pentagon agrees with you. Since 9-11, airport security has changed markedly. The search for personal weapons of destruction has led to record confiscations of pocket knives and scissors. But are we really any safer? Terrorism works because it has high symbolic value. It has very little military utility, but it has a very strong symbolic value that operates on the collective psyches of a civilian population. So terrorist attacks on the United States have to shock the American public into submission. That's what their, their orientation would be. And so doing something bad to even a large aircraft flying from New Zealand to the United States probably would not accomplish that end. So why do it? Mm. And I think that the security personnel that I see as I try to transit out of the country um, certainly don't exhibit the professionalism that one would think they should exhibit if they're really serious about security. I think that this is a lot of, uh, Again, um, symbolic displays of heightened security concerns, but with very little effectiveness. It's just a big show. If you really, if someone really, really wanted to uh, plot something involving an airliner leaving New Zealand, I don't think that the They could just drive around the back. That's the thing, <laughs> is that there's a gate around the back that you can just, you know, you get in and drive around the back. It's no problem at all. Well, I, I guess we shouldn't be too harsh on New Zealand. I'll give you a, a for instance. The, the, it's well known that a lot of the National Guardsmen and reservists who patrol the airports in the United States, full camouflage the works, them, yeah. M-16s, uh, their, their weapons are not loaded. In fact, their weapons have no bullets. And the reason for that is that these are weekend warriors, and the concern is that a real terrorist will disarm them and then hose down a concourse if they have a full magazine. If the Twin Towers hadn't have collapsed, if, if the planes had have flown into the Twin Towers, but the Twin Towers were on fire, um, but they, they were left standing, um, would things be different today? Yes, I think they would be. I think that, uh, first of all, those, even if they were charred hulks, those buildings would be standing today as a symbol of American resolve in the face of a dastardly attack. It would be a rallying cry for the Americans. But because of that, because they would be able to show that even the face of such a hor horrific onslaught, they were able to stand up even if damaged, we probably wouldn't be in Iraq today. It's very clear that this administration felt that beating on the Taliban was not enough. It was too easy. And so they had to go and punch someone else who was making life difficult for whatever reasons. And Saddam Hussein was a very convenient scapegoat. Um, it's possible that the scapegoating wouldn't have extended beyond the Taliban and Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan if that symbol of American resolve and resiliency was still left standing.
picky in a sticky situation. The celebrity share market and politicians not paying attention. Be prepared to go ballistic. To the celebrity share market now and apes us out as TVNZ sheds high priced ponies. Ashton's ears sends jitters through the market. Campbell laughs on news and goes sky high. Frodo becomes an honorary Aucklander by pissing in Bucket Fountain. And Han Shandy Dye continues to slide. Each day, journalists and politicians engage in a delicate dance with each trying to lead without stepping on the other's toes. If one should spin out of balance, the whole thing could come apart at the seams, spilling on the floor like mince on toast. In the final instalment of our behind-the-scenes expose on Parliament, we take you inside the halls of power to the weekly ritual known as the running of the ministers. And just a warning, the following story contains images of Rodney Hyde. It's Tuesday morning and journalists are on a stakeout in the hallways of power following the post-cabinet caucus meeting. It's a weekly ritual known as the running of the ministers. They keep just sort of filing through until we see one that we're interested in talking to. You see some of them sometimes slow, hesitate, hopefully, hoping that we might have a word to them, but we sort of usher them through. Morning. How are you? Very good. Slight hesitation there. Thought there might have been an issue. Your Excellency. How are you? Very well indeed. Excellent. You'll notice I call them Your Excellency because um, he, of course, is going to become one when he becomes our High Commissioner to London in 2005. Yeah. And it, nobody's officially announced it yet, but I always call him Your Excellency. <laughs> Aaron, you going to go out the front and address the GE protesters today, do you think? Um, it depends on how many questions I've got at question time. Do you actually listen to these protesters? Yes, I do listen to the protesters. Do you believe there's a lot of scaremongering in this debate? I mean, frog splice, tomatoes, for example, jumping into salad bowls. Do not set me going <laughs> on those sorts of issues. Uh, no, yes, I don't think it's scaremongering. I think it's genuinely people are scared and they are nervous. So the world's not going to change as we know it? No, the world isn't going to change as we know it. And people will have choices. They'll continue to have choices and I don't think they'll have anything more to choose from than they have today. Hobbs gets an easy ride from Soper. His 1ZB listeners are still undecided on the GE issue. But outside on the steps of Parliament, it's a different story. So do you know all of the um, all of the ministers' numbers and things like that? We have lists of all their numbers. Leah Haynes is a junior member of the press gallery and works for the Dominion Post. Do you want some? Can I just have a look? Who do you want? An H. You want Rodney? How's Rodney in there? Sarah. Oh look, Rodney Hyde, wow. Um, so I'm a baby parliamentary reporter, yeah. Well they say... Say, oi, oi, go and get us a fucking, grab us that fucking shit from down there. <laughs> no, they don't. No one says that. No. no. The press gallery is practically a who's who of New Zealand journalism. Plunkett, Campbell, Ralston, they've all done their time. And like Soper, have the classic suits to prove it. Back in his filthy office, Soper will make Marion's words into a news story. Minister Marion Hobbs says the government's committed to lifting the moratorium next year, although she does understand that people are afraid. At Parliament, Barry Soper. And these are all, of course, the former leaders. The most entertaining, of course, was David Longy. Longy was, he held great news conferences. If you threw him a line, you'd know that um, you'd get a great line back. The opposition is reduced to an absolutely pathetic shell. They cannot win an argument. They cannot mount a debate, and now they cannot even convincingly tell a lie. It was interesting watching Bolger. From when he started, he, he had a great deal of humility and uh, dealt with his backbench very well um, at the end of his term. And this is why leaders generally lose, because they, they lose touch with their backbench, and, and they tend to forget that it's the backbench that puts them into power, and it's the public that keeps them there. But to get the job in the first place, you've got to have the confidence of your colleagues. And if you lose that, um, it's good night, nurse. If you're in Wellington while Parliament's sitting, make sure you drop in for question time. It's a fascinating sight. 
and a lot more fun than Te Papa. Many people have complained about the language used on this show. But what could be worse than disgusting potty mouth madness at dinner time? Thanks to the viewer Nino who sent us this tape, illustrating a shocking new low for pornographic weatherman Jim Hickey. Well, weather time now, and the rains are gone, or is it, Jimmy? The rain is a gone burger, but the showers and the uh, and a bit of frost, well, they're sort of cum burgers, if you know what I mean. They're on the way. And g'day, folks, how are you? The southerly is here. As a follow-up to that piece, we googled the term cum burger, but the results are not fit to broadcast. And that's our show. Coming up next week, the mad dogs of journalism, where have all the hard men gone, including Rod Vaughan, with a blow-by-blow -blow account of the Bob Jones bashing. Get the out of here. From all of us here at Eating Media Lunch, come burger. At number 96, when John Campbell laughs, the world laughs with him. The public got its first look at Christchurch's controversial corgi statues this morning. <laughs> so I'm very sorry. The three life-size corgis were commissioned for the Queen's Jubilee. <laughs> With many rapists believing the $24,000 price tag was barking mad. After much delay, the statues went on hold. <laughs> Hilary, would you like to finish this off? Now, the three bronze dogs will be installed near the city centre next weekend. <laughs> I'm very sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Really it was just really all too much of me. Still to come on three news, a posh hat and a happy hat, happy footballer. The Beckhams pop in on the Queen and Westport rivals Wallywood as the town folk gather for a film screening of their own. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.